left with Grixis Delver. Call Schultz on your right with Food Chain. Let's get right into the game here. I'm curious how this matchup plays out because in my head, Grixis Delver is pretty far ahead. But if Food Chain just deploys a mishmash of creatures, they don't actually even have to combo. Yeah, the, the deck has this kind of fair-ish plan where they cast Baleful Strixes. There's three copies in Schultz's deck list here. There's a Leovold in the deck as well, a couple Walking Ballista. Actually has added Hydroid Crisis, a singleton copy of that one. You can make a bunch of mana with Food Chain and really go to work with the Crisis here. We yeah. see uh, Huang on the play with Volcanic Island, and Schultz is going to have turn one Relic of Progenitus off of Basic Island. So one of the coolest things, uh, in my opinion, for, for this Food Chain deck is the fact that it can play this very fair game plan. Um, you know, before the banning of Deathrite Shaman, it was a Deathrite Shaman Noble Hierarch deck that could ramp into a turn two Food Chain and, and combo kill you. Just, you know, you exile your own creature, make an extra mana, and then you just chain it up. You know, you hit your uh, emissaries or, or what have you, and, and eventually you just cast some X creature or giant creature uh, after you get your Miss Hall Griffin, uh, which, of course, combos super well with that food chain. Turn two for Huang was cracking Solding Tarn to 19 for Underground Sea. Young Pyromancer is the play. Schultz just had a Mystery Rainforest, and now the Pyromancer will be knocking him to 20. Yeah, not the best start here from Carl Schultz. No plays on turns one or two. I'm very curious what's in his hand. He's going to be facing down this uh, young Pyromancer, and even though uh, Relic of Progenus is quite good against Bob Wong's Gurmag Anglers, it is not good against these two threats that have been deployed in True Name Nemesis and Young Pyromancer. Yeah, that True Name Nemesis is going to catch a Force of Will from Schultz. Uh, Huang had to fetch to cast it. Schultz is going to pay one for the Force, so 18 all seem to be the life total. 17, rather, for Schultz, 18 to Huang. Now, interestingly enough, one of the coolest combinations in the Food Chain deck is using cards like Force of Will to exile Mist Hollow Griffin. And then later on, you can just cast it from exile. Interesting thing uh, you were discussing, how uh, Schultz is not really getting off the ground. This used to be a Deathrite Shaman deck prior right. to the banning of that card. And Schultz has chosen to register three copies of Birds of Paradise. So those are the big turn one plays in the deck. Pretty curious about that number. Well, I mean, Schultz uh, values Mana Acceleration to an extent, but his deck is actually designed to play a, a, a good mid-range uh, game plan. Three copies of Baleful Strix go a long way in protecting your life total, and just uh, a whole bunch of things like Abrupt Decay and Assassin's Trophy that kind of uh, walk up the curve, if you will, uh, to give you that uh, you know interaction that you may need early on. So Schultz is going to sacrifice a Misty Rainforest to 16, finds Basic Forest. There's Assassin's Trophy on Young Pyromancer. Huang will fail to find, as many of these three-color legacy decks do. Uh, I'm not sure if that's alternate art, Abrupt Decay, or if it's oh, uh, you're, Assassin's you're right. Trophy. But either way, Bob Wong does have one island. So if it's Assassin's Trophy, that means he has an island in hand. And if it's Abrupt Decay, then it's all, all no, good No, you're, you're right. That's the, that's the WMC promo, I believe. Good, good catch. Oh, that's fine. So Trinket Mage here uh, has a few hits, but Relic of Progenitus is, is one of the, the better ones. Uh, I'm curious what he has to, to go get here, but Daze takes care of that one. Yeah, frequently uh, those two main deck walking ballista are kind of what they go to work with. Really really good in the young Pyromancer matchups, but that Daze will cleanly answer that for Huang. Now at his turn, he's going to be using a Thought Scour. Really wants to get another threat online. The Relic of Progenitus, though, has been exiling a lot of Huang's graveyards, and you mentioned he's on a four Gurmag Angler build. Yeah, and this is a, a, I mean, it's obviously after containing those other two threats, uh, getting rid of the true name Nemesis with Force of Will, and then uh, using a Brep Decay to take care of Young Pyromancer. Bob Wong is a little threat light, and he's just got a bunch of answers and mana in hand. Going to be looking to find a Brainstormer to translate those into real threats. Yeah, not much going on. He'll pass back over on Schultz's side. He's going to start his turn with a Brainstorm. See if he can get something going. You see that Hydroid Crisis hanging out in his hand. He's a ways away from taking advantage of that one. All I know is that uh, if Carl Schultz gets to cast a big Hydroid Crisis, I want a face shot of Bob Wong. <laughs> I just want to see the reaction. Because that is not one you see every day in Legacy. But uh, that's been a common trend here. A lot of these newer cards that are dominating standard are powerful enough to be fitting into Legacy. Thief of Sanity, Hydroid Crisis, earlier in the day, Arclight Phoenix. You know, these are standard staples. So Schultz puts two back with his Brainstorm. No way to reset the deck. He'll just activate the Relic and pass to Huang, who is going to start with the Brainstorm, and he still has an uncracked Flooded Strand. So this might be a very big turn for him. Play a Polluted Delta, and here's Delver's Secrets. There's a threat online. 
A lot of work to do on the life total, but this is a start. Yeah. Um, Schultz is kind of brainstorm locked, so you may actually see him pop this Relic of Virginus, and that may be exactly what Bob needs in order to unlock these uh, uh, Gurmag Anglers. But food chain here, that's going to change the texture of this game. Yeah, looking like Schultz may have just left some good ones on top with the brainstorm as uh, Abrupt Decay on the Delver. Food chain is going to be the play for his turn. This one. If you, you don't play Legacy, you certainly never see this. And if you do play Legacy, you don't see it that often. So three mana enchantment lets you exile a creature you control to make that creature's mana cost plus one in mana. And you can only use that mana to cast creature spells. Right. Uh, it used to be uh, pretty busted with uh, the card Goblin Ringleader. Uh, it was used alongside Goblin Recruiter and Goblin Ringleader to effectively draw your deck and play out all your goblins. And that, in turn, would give them all haste. And you would use something like Goblin Sharpshooter to kill your opponent. Uh, it was actually to the point where it actually got Goblin Recruiter banned in, in Legacy, and it's still banned today. So you saw Huang crack a fetch land there down to 17, and Days took care of that food chain. So once again, both players just kind of hanging out with no pressure on the table. Yeah, having an answer to that food chain was a pretty huge win for Bob Wong, though he's still just giving Carl Schultz infinite time. Yeah, now Huang does have a... Fairly big graveyards to the point where if he had a Gurmag Angler, it would be sort of trivial to cast it. Wonder when Schultz might uh, think about cracking that uh, Relic of Regenitus. Well, I'm not sure. I think there's a pretty good chance he cracks it this turn. I think he just has another food chain in hand. Needs another mana to play around another days. All right, so Huang's going to start his turn with a Ponder. Looked like he kept those ones on top pretty quickly. Looking at maybe casting a Brainstorm, and he will. They must have really liked those two cards. And he still does have an uncracked Flooded Strand, so he'll be able to reset this Brainstorm if he desires. Just a lot of spinning, but neither player really applying pressure, so both players just have a ton of time. There's a sacrifice of Flooded Strand. He'll go to 16, and now Schultz is going to take this window of opportunity to exile the Relic of Progenitus. This is a really heads-up sequence here, so Huang can't go find a Black Source and cast a Gurmag Angler. Right. No, that was, that was a very good play from him. Seems to be a little bit of a squabble at the table. Not sure what that was, but it seems to be resolved anyway as Huang finds a Volcanic Island. Now, if he has a Delver of Secrets here or uh, replays the land that he returned earlier with a Daze, so he can cast something uh, to start applying some pressure, but that Relic of Progenitus did a number on any potential Gurmag Anglers that he's looking for. Yeah, well, the threat is Delver of Secrets. Uh, he'll go back Schultz's way. Start with Underground Sea. Maybe he could cast a Mist Holographin. Ooh, it's just Food Chain with uh, Daze backup, though. So that one's on the table. But uh, Schultz needs more than that to actually start going off. I, I believe that he exiled Mist Hollow Griffin earlier to force of will, though. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, next turn, he could just potentially cast the Mist Hollow Griffin. And uh, if it, Bob Wong's going to need a hard counter uh, to get rid of it. Otherwise, uh, it's going to be in a bit of trouble. Of course, Schultz's hand here is, looks pretty good, though. Force of will, uh, I can't really see the rest. But force of will is a, a good means of protection uh, if he's looking to... Uh, Gain infinite mana next turn. Maybe play a Hydroid Crisis. Uh, so for Huang, it looked like he had a look at Misty Rainforest with his Delver, and he's going to Thought Scour before the draw step, clear that off the top. And now he's going to cast a Ponder. And you see how Graveyard affects like Relic of Progenitus uh, over enough time you do get the graveyard back to get an angler online. But now, with Schultz just having the food chain, it doesn't take too much for him to assemble an actual combo from here. Right. I mean, just casting the Missile Griffin from Exile, that special ability that it has, uh, allows him to gain infinite mana. And then pair that with a Walking Ballista or Hydroid Crisis, or even a Trinket Mage, which goes and gets Walking Ballista, and you've got yourself a kill. Now, Bob needs a hard counter here, or he's going to be in some trouble. Going to cast a Brainstorm as the third cantrip he's cast this turn. I mean, Grix is not uh, notorious for being able to remove enchantments once they're on the battlefield, so it's stop the Miss Hall Griffin or bust. Enchantment's kind of Grixis's blind spot. Right. But, I mean, that's 
just the, the case with the, the color combination right. itself. There's an attack with Delver. And then a Wasteland on the Underground Sea. Schultz is at 15. And we saw him miss land drops before, so he can no longer cast the Mist Hollow Griffin without a draw. This is nice, though. Baleful Strix. That's actually plus one mana towards casting a Griffin. Yeah, and Bob actually has a decision here. Does he let the Baleful Strix resolve? If he does, uh, Carl gets to just cast Mist Hollow Griffin. Uh, if he chooses to try to counter it with a Force of Will, you know, then uh, he might just lose on the spot. So the Strix does resolve. Schultz will draw the card for that. See if he wants to go for that Griffin. Well, he has Hydrocrasis and he has uh, Missile Griffin. And he also has a Force of Will. So he, if, if the Hydrocrasis is his only form of uh, infinite, like able to use the infinite mana, uh, and he has a pitch into the Force of Will, it's not great. But let's see, let's see how this plays out. So Schultz did exile the Strix. He's going to cast the Mist Hollow Griffin from exile. Huang is going to catch that with the Force of Will, and Schultz is going to force back. Yep. And uh, the Mist Hollow Griffin sticks. Carl's going to exile it and gain infinite mana, uh, both green and blue, because each time you generate one extra. And he's going to draw his deck here, finding a walking ballista and as much protection as he needs. And this should be all she wrote. Looks like he's leaving exactly two cards in his deck. But uh, as you mentioned, yeah, the Walking Ballista, you just get to work with the Griffin again, make that infinite infinite, or at least 30-30. That's going to dispatch Bob Huang, and these players will go to game two. A Deltron strategy. <laughs> well, check out the sideboards for these players. You're not going to find any enchantment hate for Huang, but... Uh, I guess uh, we don't have them on the screen just yet, so we'll just read them off here. Yeah, I mean, you can check them out on the uh, the Cardboard Live extension, I believe. Uh, they'll be up in just a second, but we're going to go over the sideboards. Uh, but first, let, let's actually talk about what happened in that game. Just a quick recap. Sure. Uh, Bob Wong, he deployed uh, a Young Pyromancer on two. Uh, didn't ever cast an Instant or Sorcerer with it. Decided to go for a True Name Nemesis on three. That got hit with a Force of Will. Okay. Carl Schultz untaps, uses a Brav Decay to take care of Young Pyromancer. Completely wipes out Bob Wong's pressure. Uses Relic of Progenitus to eat the graveyard. Completely invalidating something like Gurmag Angler. And Bob Wong just not able to apply any real pressure. This food chain deck played such a good, fair game plan in game one, and I'm really impressed by it. Yeah, and I think that's what a lot of players like about food chain, right? It's not the fastest combo deck. You know, in fact, you're usually planning on sticking a three mana enchantment, untapping, and you know, doing more stuff that costs more mana, right? Right. But the fact that you get to just cast Baleful Strix in your combo deck, you know, the Leovold can be pretty powerful, and Walking Ballista actually just matches up against a lot of the most popular threats in the format as well. Right, and uh, that was one thing that I noticed uh, when I was testing out Food Chain on uh, Versus Live a while back, uh, was that when you could go Deathrite Shaman into Leovold, no matter what the rest of your deck was, that was usually good enough to win a couple games in Legacy, you know? Yeah. If your opponent doesn't have the removal spell, they all their brainstorms and, and ponders and everything are kind of locked out. And even if they do have the removal spell, you still get to draw a card. Get to keep playing Magic. Leave all just a, a really strong card that this Fuche deck has access to. Yeah, and uh, definitely with Grixis being probably the most pow popular color set in Legacy right now, Grixis Delver, Grixis Control, and you know you have things like um, the Grixis Phoenix deck, etc. There's not much in the ways of cards to interact with the food chain on the table. Right, and that's that's really where uh, Carl's going to get a significant edge. If he's able to ever stick a food chain, even if he's not combo killing that turn, the threat of the combo over the next few turns, any resolve missile Griffin or anything like that is going to result in infinite mana and a huge headache for Bob Wong. All right, so we have cyborgs up now. So for Bob Huang, the options here, two Pyroblast and a Braid, and is it Static Caster, two Graft Digger's Cage, a Pithing Needle, an Engineered Explosives, a Winter Orb, two Flusterstorm, a Surgical Extraction, two Better Blossom, and a Diabolic Edict. Does any of this look good to you? <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, it is rough, right? Two, two Pyroblasts is about it, uh, and that's it's not even that good. It's good. There's going to be some Force Will fights. Uh, it can counter... A Leovold on the stack, it can counter a Miss Hollow Griffin on the stack. Hell, it can even counter a Hydroid Crisis on the stack. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, worst comes to worst, uh, it, it'll be an, an okay card, at least to tag a Brainstorm. But, I mean, as for everything else, like, are you supposed to bring in as a Static Caster? I actually just don't know. This matchup 
uh, is not one that I have a lot of experience in, and it's one that I'm sure Bob Wong doesn't have a ton of experience either. As, as much of a, a legacy master and, a, and legacy heavy legacy player as he is, Food Chain is one of those decks that's few and far between. And we'll see exactly how he navigates this going forward. Over on Carl Schultz's side, we have an Engineer Explosives, two Surgical Extraction, a Graph Digger's Cage, three Thoughtseize, two Flusterstorm, a Marsh Casualties, two Diabolic Edict, an Assassin's Trophy, a Liliana the Last Hope, and a Vendillion Click. What do you like here? Um, I mean, I think you kind of uh, continue moving towards that uh, overarching, like, slower game plan. You know, you want to have uh, some disruption, some removal. I think Diabolic Edict and Marsh Casualties are pretty solid because they're answers to uh, true name Nemesis, while uh, Casualties also clears out uh, things like Young Pyromancer or an early Delver. Liliana Last Hope is pretty good. Vendillion Click's pretty good. Uh, I don't know. I think just load up on removal is probably fine. You know, you don't really need those Force of Wolves, you know. Yeah, definitely a force of will against a fair deck. Mostly what you'd be trying to catch would be your opponent's force of will. I will say one thing about Carl Schultz's deck. There's a little bit of an incentive to leave force of will in just because it's a way to exile Mist Hollow Griffin and it doesn't really matter to you. Right. No, that's, that's certainly fair. Yeah, so uh, we're playing Legacy this weekend, and we have some great content over at StarCityGames.com. If you're interested in checking that out, you can get some nice highlights in our newsletter which is totally free to subscribe to. You get highlights from the best articles, upcoming SEG tour dates and location, find out about invitational qualifiers near you, get you set up for SEG Con Summer coming up, find out about game nights, and it's totally free to sign up. There's really no reason not to. Yeah, I mean, uh, I know way back in the day, I was a pretty regular contributor to the newsletter. Uh, I wrote little mini articles for it and stuff, and uh, there's just a ton of great content in those, and again, it is free to sign up for. Players are underway in game number two. Wong leading on Volcanic Island. Schultz is going to play a fetch land. Pluto Delta on turn two for Wong. And no real action just yet. Yeah, Wong just like kind of playing it slow. He has a spell pierce in hand, I think. Uh, probably wants to make sure that Carl's unable to resolve something like Brainstorm on this uh, first few turns. Second land for Schultz is Tropical Island. He'll go ahead and sacrifice that Burton Catacombs now. He's at 19, finds Underground Sea. Maybe a turn two Baleful Strix. Yeah, I mean, this would be a perfect foil to uh, Bob Wong kind of sitting on his hands with these reactive spells. You know, that uh, Beautiful Strix is quite good against all the threats from Bob Wong except for True Name Nemesis. Sylvan Library is the cast, actually. That one might force some action. Yeah, and if Bob has adopted this slower game plan, looking to trade one for one a bunch, something like Sylvan Library is potentially devastating. I would not be surprised here if Bob wants to fight over this. It looks like he's going to go for a hard cast Daze. Yeah, cracks his fetch land to 19, and there it is, Daze. That'll take care of the enchantment, which, as we've been discussing, Grixis can't really do anything about on the table, so very beneficial to have the counter spell here. And let's see if Bob can get a threat online. Pretty light graveyard, so it would be hard to Gurmag Angler from here. But he's going to start with Thought Sour. He might <laughs> yeah, get there. I was going to say, tell that to Thought Sour, baby. Yeah, he might get there. I mean, that's one of the, the newer additions to this archetype. The, the version that plays for Gurmag Angler are, are very incentivized to play four copies of uh, Thought Scour. And uh, we see it a good amount in Modern, and it's kind of this newer addition to Legacy. Reminds me a lot of when people used to play Mental Note with Nimble Mongoose. Those were the days. Those were the days. <laughs> Crack of a fetch land for Huang. What, what, and what here's Gurmag Angler. Pretty sure at the beginning of turn, so it's going to be pretty hard for him to cast a Gurmag Angler this turn. Yeah, you know, he, uh, he worked real hard at it, and he got there. Yeah, seems like he cast it with a mana up. <laughs> 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 and that is, of course, I believe, to hold up... Uh, Spell Pierce, but also has the Lightning Bolt uh, to take care of that Baleful Strix, that potential blocker. No land, though, for Carl Schultz. This could be bad. Yeah, Schultz had that extra card, but now he's under significant pressure. The Angler's knocking him down to 14 already. Assassin's Trophy, though. That could answer the Grimmay Angler, if not for the Spell Pierce. Yeah, that Spell Pierce there doing some work, but Carl Schultz, the story of this game, when he looks back, it's going to be, why couldn't I draw another land? <laughs> Angler rumbles across again. Schultz down to nine. Put his strand for Huang. We'll go back Schultz's way. Drew Birds of Paradise. Not really a land. Yeah, that's a, that's generally about the times where I draw Birds of Paradise. Just uh, <laughs> ooh, a murderous cut. Another attempt on the angler's life. 
And this looks like it's going to work, and Carl might have found enough time to stabilize. This Birds of Paradise is not really a land, but it is going to force Bob Wong to deal with it, or else Carl Schultz is going to get online next turn. Yeah, Schultz had enough cards in Graveyard to cut and cast the birds off two lands. Wong's going to Lightning Bolt that, but no additional threat. Just guys to pass back after that. Yeah, and the more time you give this Food Chain deck, the easier it's going to be to get out of this. Carl Schultz find his, finds his third land. Is it time for Food Chain? Yeah, there's Pluted Delta. He'll go to eight. What does he have? Uh, he's got a lot of spells in hand, I can tell you that much. Yeah, I mean, that happens when you miss five land drops or whatever and also cast the Belfast Strix in the <laughs> meantime. Right. Goes and finds a Bayou. Plenty of access to all the colors in the deck. From my experience, uh, playing uh, this pseudo Protect the Queen game plan, like with Gurmag Angler or Death Shadow, occasionally just falls apart. If your opponent has the removal spell for your one threat and you can't find another one, you know, chances are they're going to have enough time to assemble whatever they, they have. And then the later the game goes, the more uh, difficult it becomes to contain all the stuff they play when your containment is usually things like days or spell pierce. And here's a food chain for Schultz. That one resolves. Huang's going to spin his tires, let on a ponder, kept, and he's brainstorming. you got to figure there's something you like there, but it might have just been the brainstorm. We'll see exactly how it goes. Yeah, it was probably just the brainstorm. He already had a fetch land on the battlefield, so he's able to shuffle away two of the bad ones. But if he finds a threat in the meanwhile, or even uh, like a force will or something, he might be okay. But with Carl with a handful of cards, I cannot imagine that this game is going to go well for Bob Wong. Puts two back, sacrifices the flooded strand. Wong's at 17, finds underground C. Plenty of cards in the graveyard for another Gurmag Angler if he has one. Here's a tap of two mana, and there it is, second copy of the fish. And if I'm not mistaken, his last two cards are Force Will and another blue card. So Carl's going to need to get something going here right now. Pretty nice straw set for Schultz, though. Baleful Strix was picked up off the top. And if you're Bob Wong, I think you have to snap this off because that Gurmag Angler as your only form of pressure needs to be able to close this game out in two turns. Schultz casts the Strix, and Huang cannot force a will fast enough. And Schultz puts it in the bin. Does Schultz have a, a one-mana creature to start the chain? He does not. Angler knocks him to three. Young Pyromancer at the table down. for Huang. Can Schultz combo this turn? Shields are down. Misty Rainforest, do Eternal Scourge. That's infinite mana. What you got? Where are we going? Ooh, there's that's, the crisis. That's drawing the deck. That's how do that'll do it. 2-0. <laughs> and oh, Carl <laughs> Schultz over Bob Huang. Food chain Ooh, over Grixis wee. Delver. And Schultz is now 7-0 and oh with kind of an unexpected deck. Yeah, I mean, like I said, Food Chain just finds a way to win. And there it was just a perfect...